<clears throat> oh, hey boys and girls. I was just reading my handy dandy Marvel Encyclopedia hardcover because I really don't have anything else to do. <laughs> and so I like to uh, read encyclopedias. But welcome to Lords of the Long Box and another edition of Letters from the Long Box where myself and Mikey Sutton answer viewer mailbag questions this is episode seven i think so i appreciate everybody for putting in your questions from both the geekosity facebook page as well as the lords of Longbox video that appears every thursday if you have a question that you want myself or mikey to answer leave it in the comment below and we'll try to get to it next thursday and if your question gets answered we will give you a marvel no prize in the mail we don't even need your address that's how cool we are all right let's get right to it boys and girls Ah, first first one is from Geekosity. It's from our friend Dan Hickman. Is it true that Arrow is going to appear on Agents of Shield per J Conrad? Uh being that this aired Thursday and Agents of Shield was on last night. Absolutely not, says Mikey Sutton. It is. I fully expect to see the four horsemen of the apocalypse, snow and hell, and dogs and cats living together before that happens. I won't even ask my inside sources about this because this rumor is potentially offensive. Errol may not be a household name, but she is a high profile Chinese female superhero. And as much of a huge fan of Agents of Shield that I am, her MCU launch being on the final season of a sadly ratings depleted TV is insulting. And with no promo to announce it, come on, man. This apparently began as a Reddit post, and I guess that's what happens when spec dries up. You dumpster dive, and this is hot garbage. So if you don't know, there was a Reddit that somehow speculated that Arrow was going to be in last night's episode of Ages of S.H.I.E.L.D., um, which I found mildly racist because uh, it featured a lot of uh, Chinese characters or Asian characters, and let's say just assumed Arrow was going to be in there, and uh, some schlub with a YouTube channel uh, and um, and apparently a, a web page uh, double down on this Reddit theory since he has none of his own specs are uh, come true and he just steals other people's. But thank you for the question, Dan Hickman. Uh, the next question comes from Suraj Mera. I hope I said that right. This is probably the second time we use your name and I probably butchered it again. Uh, first, I just want you to know when Spidey is first. I just want to know when Spidey is truly coming home. There is not even a whisper about who is bidding on Sony for any time or any time frame. Wow, that was, uh, I need to fix the punctuations on these questions so I can read them better. But basically, I don't even read these questions before I go and record this. So there you go. Maybe I should. Hmm. Anyway, uh, Mikey's response is because of the global pandemic, the subsequent drain on global finances, there is no movement on that front at the moment. I would expect any actions taken and I wouldn't expect any actions taken until a vaccine has been distributed and money begins to flow again. So basically uh, the whispers of Sony perhaps selling their film and TV division has been rumored for a while now. Obviously uh, those things have kind of taken a backseat due to the global pandemic. And uh, mainly a lot of time these transactions are done with stock prices. And right now those stock prices are well below what they normally should be. So it's kind of hard to put a value on each other. So, but uh, we've heard that it's going to happen, but the companies have to kind of, you know, kind of go on how they plan to go like they end up doing regular business, just like Fox is doing until the very day they got sold. So uh, we'll see if Sony continues to hold on to the Spider-Man franchise or get rid of them. They're still developing a lot of Sony stuff, but Marvel definitely wants some of that Sony stuff. And other people like Apple and Netflix want the Sony library for their streaming service. So we shall see, man. Nick Taylor asks, I see Beast on Sword. Will he be a regular on the show or a guest star? Same goes for Kitty Pride. Uh, Mikey's response is, this is in reference to my Beast scoop on the Everything Always YouTube channel. From what I've been told, they are planning the Beast to be a regular on the Sword channel. Show as for Kitty Pride, she will be a guest star, but her series is going to be Excalibur. Remember, we dropped Kitty Pride and Excalibur, so that's good news. Uh, Beast has always kind of been attached with Sword in the comics, or at least recently, so yeah, it's be very interesting. So, Sword is coming, um, and Kitty Pride is definitely very popular in the comics right now with Marauders, and obviously, she has ties to Excalibur in the comics as well. So, there you go. All right, next question is from Salmon Ali Kirk from the Gigosity page Mikey Sutton and Tivo, how likely will Kristen Ritter returned to reprise her role as Jessica Jones once the Netflix lockdown is 
up. Christian Ritter, Charlie Cox, and John Bernthal are most likely to return to play their characters in the, I guess, the Disney-owned Marvel Studios characters. Uh, so basically, everybody except for Iron Fist and Luke Cage. So, but they like those characters to return in some form or fashion, probably on Hulu or maybe even FX for the more uh, adult fair um, stuff for Marvel, as opposed to Disney Plus, where these are street level characters and their histories are obviously much more violent and darker that would fit on the Disney Plus show. Our friend Chad Crow. Has anyone Marvel Disney talked about bringing Miracle Man to the MCU? Unfortunately, no. Alan Moore's Miracle Man is one of the greatest comic books ever written, an integral part of his 80s post-punk update on superheroes. However, its graphic adult nature would be uh, would not be allowed to be fully visualized on Hulu, and it would be incredibly expensive. Miracle Man number 15, by the way, is the most wonderful sick comics I've ever read. I'm not even sure Disney would finance a project where a family's flesh is hanging on a clothesline and a little boy's head is crushed like a tomato by the hero, even for Hulu. So there you go. Um, and if you don't know, Alan Moore is known to be very contentious and a curmudgeon when it comes to his uh, properties being used for anything besides the original comic book. So it would be hilarious if Disney Plus tried to do a Miracle Man and what Alan Moore is response would be um he's still alive but he if he was dead he'd roll over in his grave if uh, disney tried to do it anything with miracle man all right uh, another one from gigasny eugene yang is hellstrom part of the mcu i heard hellstrom is coming to hulu well how closely connected will it be to the mcu only in the same way that Marvel's previous occult-themed series, Cloak and Dagger, was. Technically, it is in the MCU, but Doctor Strange will not be appearing. This will be the last of its kind. So basically, it's the kind of the, the last farewell of the Jeff Loeb-produced stuff um, that Hulu was going to do. If you remember Hellstrom, then after they put the kibosh on everything else, because Seven Feige wanted to incorporate all that stuff into the regular MCU, Ghost Rider. At one point, Blade was going to be a part of that team, but then Blade went over to the MCU once Mahershala Ali said, I want to play Blade. So unfortunately, we're going to get one season of Hellstrom and it may be loosely connected, but not integrally part of the MCU proper like Disney Plus is. All right. Uh, James Sock Sockeld. <laughs> I hope I got that right. I have a question, Mikey Sutton. Will Darkhawk ever come into the MCU? Darkhawk is being to be uh, Darkhawk is being developed to be the best friend of Richard Nova, aka or Richard Ryder, aka Nova. See, I made Richard Ryder and Nova into one word, Richard Rover. Anyway, yes. So Darkhawk is going to be uh, Richard Ryder's best friend Nova in the, either the Nova uh, MCU t movie series. That is, I'm sorry, did I say TV series? Anyway, the MCU MC Ugh. the Nova MCU film will feature Darkhawk. Not saying that would be his debut, but Darkhawk is definitely coming to the MCU. All right, man, there's a ton of them this week. I should have practiced, but anyway. All right, these are from uh, Lords of the Long Box. Marvel Freak asks, will we ever see Gabriel Luna reprise his role as Robbie Reyes in the MCU? Mikey says, I don't have any details, and their plans for Ghost Rider shift like Archie Andrews' dating schedule for Betty and Veronica. <laughs> Jesus, Mike. But yes, the focus will be on Johnny Blaze. However, Luna is going to parent, apparently return as Robbie Reyes somewhere along the line. We've always said that Marvel is planning on multiple iterations of Ghost Rider for the MCU, be it in the movies and or Disney Plus series. Uh, Luke. That's all his name is. Okay. Luke from uh, Lords of Longbox. Any long-term plans for Kit Harrington and the Black Knight? Game of Thrones seems like a lifetime ago. You are correct. It was a lifetime ago. They are looking at a franchise for the Black Knight and that is linked to the Excalibur series on Disney+. Plus. Uh, way back when we said uh, coming out of the Eternals film that Kit Harington was going to get his own franchise and potentially lead a team. Um, you know, Excalibur, Captain Britain Corps, something along those lines. So yes, uh, uh, Black Knight is a long-term play. So that's a great book to go out and get. All right. Our friend Red Lodge Crow asks, Mikey Sutton and TiVo, million dollar question. Let's put this to rest. Will Noel be in the MCU in the next 10 years? Man, I seem to get this a lot. Um, Noel being the Donny Cates creation. That's all the rage right now in the comics. They haven't been discussing him yet, although a number of vocal fans are clamoring for it. So anything is possible in a decade's time, but nothing has been talked about yet. So there it goes. I always talk about how 
MCU and Kevin Feige ha- does they kind of shy away from brand new characters. Uh, very rarely do you see a character that was just created over the last couple of years in the Marvel side, at least to go and um, debut on the big screen. You know, if they've been around for five, six years, you know, at least that point. I mean, if you look at we Williams, maybe uh, Kamala Khan, but they've been around for, you know, four or five years. Null has been a couple of years and he's a villain. So Anything is possible. Fans make enough noise, but all the spec recently on Null is strictly driven by comics and new comic storylines, which is a good thing, right? I mean, they don't always. It's good to see that a book or character get hot, not because it's based off of movie or TV spec, but just based off of good old Donny Cates tweeting about it and uh, comic books coming about. All right. Next question is from Unnecess- Unnecessary Roughness. That was a great movie, by the way. Isn't that the movie Canada Reeves? Anyway, Unnecessary Roughness asks. Just found you guys recently. The info y'all give is valuable. So my question is, being a new collector, when a character is spec'd, is it best to get their first cameo appearance in in the comics or their first full appearance in the comics? Mikey's response is, Timbo is the expert on this. From my point of view, a cameo, especially if they show the person's face, is technically the first appearance. That is a great question. And, and Cameo and first appearance a lot of times is dictated by the market, uh, regardless of what a writer, combo creator says, the app says, it's whatever the market dictates. That's why for decades now, Hulk 181 has been considered the first full appearance of Wolverine, even though he looks like a first full appearance in 180. It's whatever the market dictates. So I would say on new comics... Uh, sometimes the uh, origins and cameos and first appearance would be retconned so often that get them all. Uh, and and it, obviously, if it's affordable, you can't do that with Hulk 180, 181, right? Because they're both expensive books. But on new books, get them all. Because after a while, it all depends on what the market dictates. Uh, when I say that is which which ones the collectors deemed most valuable to be collected as part of that character's uh, history. I hope that answers your question. But great question, though. Super fan. Hi to Timbo and our good friend Sir Mikey Sutton. You two are doing a great job keeping the Geekometer up and running in this dire time. Well, thank you. I have been following both of you since the Spidey crisis between Sony and Marvel. You kept our hope up in that situation. We were rewarded with our trust with in you accordingly. So I have some questions. Man, there's four questions here. Hold on, man. Let me take a drink of my Cavassier. It's actually iced tea. I wouldn't drink Cavassier in a straw. Come on now. All right. All right, this guy, uh, Superman, you got a few questions. You got four questions. So let's go uh, through the first one first. Do you know if DC has any active plan for Blue Beetle, Beaster Gold, and Dr. Fate? And is DC going to make any more Harley Quinn's movie in the near future? Man, that's a ton of them. Um, Let me see. Also, his second question is Deadpool kills the Marvel Universe the way Kevin Feige and Ryan Reynolds want to go in Deadpool 3? His third question is Ben 10 live action TV series really coming? And is Universal's Dark Universe dead for real? And what plans do Legendary Pictures and WB have for Monarch and Titans after Godzilla versus Kong? Any of your TV or web series have been planned? Wow, that is a ton of questions. Uh, let's see. Thank you so much for the kind words. Dr. Fate is headed to the DCU via Black Adam. I have uh, reports on Booster Gold and Blue Beetle on an upcoming Lords episode, so stay tuned to that. Deadpool kills the Deadpool kills the Marvel Universe is po- is possible for the future. However, I am told they will currently not be pursuing that. I don't have any news on a third and fourth questions at production time. So there you go. So nothing on Ben Ten live action series or the legendary um, Godzilla King Kong franchise. Sorry about that. Cause I'm a huge fan of the legendary Godzilla King Kong films and I can't wait for Godzilla versus Kong. Ugh, love those films. I was a Kaiju fan before I was a comic book fan. I was not remember as a kid watching creature features on Friday nights and they would always show like Godzilla flicks, man. And I would just, this was, I was probably seven or eight years old when I first saw my uh, first Godzilla films. And I, Oh, speak of the, I, you know what? I had no idea this question was coming. There you go, man. You know what? What a coincidence. That is serendipitous right there, boys and girls. If you don't know what that means, look it up. I literally did not look up these questions before doing the show. So there you go. All right. Eddie Gomez asks, TiVo and Mikey, <clears throat> is John Skrzynski and Emily Blunt still the first, cho- first choices for the Fantastic Four? 
As far as I'm concerned, Krasinski is a lock. Both are front runners. That's Mikey's response. That would be awesome. I think it's just inevitable this time. If I think if fandom uh, wishes it to be, it will happen. Uh, there's been awesome fan art. They've been talking about it. Krasinski's been talks. There's been Emily Blunt is already part of the Disney family with the Mary Poppins film. So there you go. If we all wish it, it will happen. Wish, wish, wish. Okay. Next question is from Benjamin Cross. This is the last one. Do you think at any point in the MCU, do you think any point in MCU A-list act? <clears throat> Excuse me. My God. Okay. Let's try that again. <clears throat> I had to get a drink of water and pause the video. Oof. All right. Benjamin Cross asks, do you think at any point in MCU A-list actors such as Brad Pitt, Matt Damon, or Leonardo DiCaprio may be considered for roles, especially since you mentioned The Rock has a lot of movie influence, plus because he is a major actor. P.S. I already know Damon had a small cameo in Thor Ragnarok. Honestly, wouldn't be surprised if two of those three end up in the MCU roles in the next couple of years. Add Ben Affleck too. Now, that's interesting. I didn't expect Ben Affleck. Like I said, I read these at the first time that you guys read them. So a lot of times I'm surprised by Mikey's answers and uh, the questions, to be honest with you. So the question is Brad Pitt, Matt Damon, Leo DiCaprio, and Mikey's response is uh, two of the three. Good Lord. Ah, getting all dry throated, y'all. <clears throat> and cotton mouth. Anyway, so Brad Pitt, Matt Damon, Leo DiCaprio. Uh, Mikey says he wouldn't be surprised if two of those three end up in MCU roles. There you go. My guess is I don't think Leonardo DiCaprio would ever do it. I think he's poo-pooed superhero films in the past. I could be wrong, but I could definitely see Brad Pitt. Brad Pitt has superhero looks. I mean, he would have been a great Captain America, to be honest with you. And Matt Damon, Matt Damon can do anything. Plus, he played Loki in the little play scene in Ragnarok, so that was hilarious. So part technically, he is part of the MCU already. All right. Uh, thank you guys for the super, super long questions. And we did this in one, well, kind of two takes. I had to pause and drink something because uh, my throat was so parched from the cotton mouth but thank you all once again we're having fun with this so this is episode number seven if you have any questions questions for mikey or i please leave them in the comments after the video post make sure you subscribe like the video till next time boys and girls keep digging in them long boxes peace out